All right, cool. Yo, thank you for joining us on another episode of I Don't Know That's Perfect, the podcast, man. I'm one of the co-hosts, Neighborhood Nick, joined here by who? I'm Mario from the South Side. Hey, what's up, man? And we have a special show here today, man. Uh, bro, uh, you wear a lot of hats, man. Like, I've, I've scrubbed your social medias, man, and it's so much that you do. Uh, but we have the homie, man, uh, notable name, Cam the Tastemaker here on our show today, man. What's up? How you doing? How you guys doing, man? I appreciate that. That's a, that's a great intro, man. I appreciate that. Hey, you know, you know hey, I love to give people their flowers while they're here, man. That's, that's lit. I think exactly. so you guys having me. Hey, no worries, How are you man. today, bro? Sorry? How are you doing today, bro? Not too bad, man. I'm doing real good. Thank you. Uh, today's been a, a crazy day. Um, you know, I do the, uh, like you said, I wear a lot of hats, but it was the morning I was at the school with, at the at Wallace Middle School and Kyle, um, had a few different interviews and things like that. And now with you guys. Uh, so I've been working all day, man. Tuesdays are my, are my busy days. So it's good though. It's good busy. Gotcha. What, uh, what are you doing over at the school? Uh, we're actually helping them, uh, quote unquote, use their voice. So we're trying to teach kids you know obviously with voting and all that kind of stuff like you know using your voice and being able to know that you have a voice is very important and so we're helping Wallace Middle School uh quote unquote use their voice to be able to you know make a stance or be able to tell people how they're feeling things like that um through artistic steps so what we're doing is uh literally it's like a fundraiser based around uh Spotify so we're going to help them put you know a podcast or uh, comedy or their poetry or their music or anything like that on Spotify and Apple Music. And we're going to use that to be a fundraiser for the school and then give money back to the kids for them to use what they would like with it. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Well, uh, let's let's kind of let's kind of take it back, man. Um, so let's let's start from the beginning, man. Where how did you get started in just like uh, wh- where you are now? Like, I, I think I read somewhere that you you actually started doing music first, right? Yeah, correct. Um, I was about 15, I guess, 15 and a half, 16. I was one of the first ones in my kind of circle to get a car. And, um, you know, the, the very first Tuesday, I remember this like nothing. The very first Tuesday I could find, I went directly to uh, the Victory Grill where they had the open mics. At the time, yeah. I was the only place you could do it, you know. Um, yeah. So I went out there, literally every um, little kid from Round Rock going to the east side of Austin on school nights every Tuesday trying to just pack out the house. And then eventually uh, Clifford Miller, the guy who was working there, uh, he gave me the night and allowed me to start hosting it and start to curate it. And so that's where I, where I really start to get like the understanding of the business side. Um, started realizing like, if I just keep putting myself on stage, I'm never gonna make any money, right? <laughs> so <it was> like, <laughs> I started like, you know, getting relationships and building and start building real shows and learning how ticketing works and learning how booking. So all that started happening. And then I started realizing that I really did like the business side and that I was able to help a lot of people. So the artists that I was booking, cause I started like making enough money to start booking bigger acts. So I was, you know, 17, but I was bringing in, you know, people that were actually people right and then so from that point those artists start to realize that I took care of them better than even some of the guys on the other side of the highway you know and so it was things like that that allowed me to become like you know a tour manager or become doing digital marketing for somebody you know so I started getting these reputations of being able to like I took care of people and so the deeper I got into the business, the more I wanted to tell artists in Austin, like, this is how you're supposed to do it. I just kept finding avenues of things that maybe we didn't know. And I felt like we had to tell people. So that's kind of where I just got all of my juice from. I, I, all I do is, you know, try to look for ways to help people win. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, and you said, you said, you said uh, Round Rock. So you also, you Austin born or Round Rock born? Well, so neither, my dad was in the military and then he uh, retired out here in Austin. So I lived right. with my grandma on the South side for a little bit. And then uh, when my, my mom when my mom and my dad came back to Texas, then I moved back in with them in Round Rock. So I went to high school and middle school in Round Rock. Got you, got you. What high school you go to, man? Just just real quick, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I was out in Round Rock for a little bit, okay. but uh, I didn't go to Round Rock school and I went to Conley, you know what I'm saying? I was just out there because my mom wanted us in the nicer area of the town. Yeah. With me and my two brothers. So, what school you? What high school you go to? Well, I went to Sunny Point. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay. Stony Point and Conley had some situations back Man, in the that, day. That, that was gonna be my next question. I was like, what class yeah. are you, bro? That's yeah. a 06, bro. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I was when the stuff was really popping off with Stony Point and Conley. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I don't know if it was like, because I do a podcast on the side, I do the two hour lunch break. Yeah. Uh, and I think I have either, it was either Mario on or it was somebody else, but we were, uh, me and my co host were telling the stories of Conley versus Stony Point, man. And it <laughs> the, used to get very physical out there with that. Oh, man. It's crazy. Used to get real physical out there, man. Okay, you know, like, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, uh, so just kind of, you know, just moving along. So you, you noticed that, that, you know, you, you enjoyed the business side a little bit more than the artist side. Uh, was you actually nice though, rapping though? I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that. I was, I was, I was pretty, uh, yeah, I would say I was nice, man. We had a good little, we had a good little crew. Definitely the people around me were better than I was. I always thought, always thought that my, my people, my crew were better than me. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, I, I wouldn't say I was bad at all. Like people still to this day are just like, man, you should release something. Just show, just show people a little something, something you know? Yeah. You still, uh, did, did the name, uh, did you still have a uh, camera taste maker as your name back then too? Or? No, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I actually went by C Sharp. Um, okay. Yeah. So, and it's funny because like, I don't know if y'all remember, Chameleon there used to do those uh, I Am Legend tours. We used to drop off his albums at the, all of the like, uh, stores and stuff with him like mm-hmm. himself. He yeah. came to uh, he came to uh, Piranha Records. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. If you go to YouTube right now, like bro, he put my whole sixteen. I was outside rapping. He put my whole sixteen on the back of his like YouTube uh, like vlog thing that he was doing back then, bro. That's so, live. That's live. Yeah. <laughs> And at the time, that was my favorite rapper. So I was like, well, I'm gonna yeah. make it. You know what I'm hey, Camilla hey. man, Camilitary, Razak, all the hey, bro. bro. Yeah. That was my that was my punchline king. Yeah, yeah. See, see, okay, we 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 there with it. Because <laughs> like literally on, on, on one of our latest episodes, I just put uh Camillionaire and Razak Pink Ring off in uh off in our uh, episode. So it's it's a classic track, man. Okay. Bro. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, so that was that your first like big look from somebody as far as just like uh, you know, that opportunity yeah. to there? As far as my music is concerned, like back then, man, it was so long. like we were doing some things, like we won some contests um, for the radio because you know back then they were doing it was called Fuse. Mm-hmm. I think it's yellow now. The club is called. We used to be called Fuse. Yeah. Uh, you know, 104.3 used to be out there all the time. And so we won a contest or whatever. And so we was on the radio a couple of times, but um, yeah, I think that was probably my biggest look. You know, today, if that was to happen to somebody, it would be huge, you know what I mean? So gotcha. um, yeah, I, th- I think that was I think that's probably my biggest break as far as me being a rapper. Got you, got you. And of course we, uh, we went to college, right? I saw you studied uh, uh, commercial music business, is that correct? Yeah, man. Um, what a lot of people may not know about me is I actually grew up playing soccer. Um, oh, shit. Sure. I was in the military, yeah. so I was in Germany for the first few years of my life. I picked up soccer, and so I was very good, and I actually went to college in North Carolina for soccer, came back, uh, played with the Austin Aztecs semi-pro team. That's when I went to uh, ACC to do commercial music business. Uh, you should have tried out for the FC team. You hey, know? Uh, <laughs> use you right now. <laughs> they they did they did good this weekend. Move. They did good this weekend, but <laughs> hey, I love that we have a pro team here in Austin. I think it's gonna yes. help with our economy. Um, you know, I wish Ooh. I was I was coming up these days knowing that I had a pro team in my city, but it's cool. The Aztecs was fun. We yeah. did what we had to do. Okay, okay. Was you offense, defense? Where where would you play soccer? I was a uh, so back at that time we were. Um, Cause again, I was 19, 20 when that happened. Like I left my freshman year and just went, like I was one and done, you know? Okay. Um, so I was 19, 20 years old. And so we were, I was a hybrid. I played defense, but I did a lot of attacking out of the back so that people didn't know where it was coming from. That was kind of okay. my strength. Okay, okay. So we, would you like center midfield or? Like, uh, outside back. Outside, okay, okay, okay. See, I actually follow soccer uh, like crazy myself. And it's always oh, like, I always get like, ugh, like, you know, black guy <laughs> loving soccer That's or me. like knowing about soccer. You know what I'm saying? That's, so that was it's, the, it's the world's more popular sport. Like, For, exactly. Kind of, you know? Always popular exactly. sport. And the thing is, have, go ahead. No, no, so they're just going to say that I think they're going to have the, the, I think it's the Gold Cup here in Texas. Because yes. I, I saw the lineup for the. There's like, 
there's like five, like every city in Texas that has a professional stadium, like they're looking at putting yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it, would be, it would be awesome if they did in Austin. In Austin. Like, it would be perfect line. Stadium today, you know, is like, great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, shit, man. Talk about that. Uh, talk about the commercial music business um, that you were studying when you came back here to ACC. Did that pretty much set like the path of where you were headed? Like now? Yeah, a hundred percent. That's what made me really, really understand the business in a way that was like, okay, you don't have to be famous to make money. Like, there's actual money right here if you just create a business. Um, and that's what put me on my on my path of like getting artists to stop chasing the industry and just create their own of their own business and try to make a business run. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Manufacturing music is just like manufacturing t-shirts or anything else, you know, so. Got you, got you. And uh, do, do we do we finish at ACC? No, did not. Um, I did not actually, I, you know, I'm just not a school guy, I guess. Um, <laughs> he is well, he is well, bro. I, I, that yeah. being said, uh, the professors, I still kept tapped in with them. I kept, I kept, I kept learning. I just wasn't learning in class. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, so just, just kind of like after you dipped, uh, what was your next? What was your next steps? What were your next things that kind of pushed you over into transforming into Cam the Taste Maker, man? Oh, like, gotcha. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. So I started a company named Mixy, um, which is music industry by individuals. Okay. Kind of the same concept that we have here is with rental record label. It's basically like we wanted to be the team that anybody could come to and we could help you like basically be your record label. We could do everything for you, right? Um, and so we did that for about five years. And, you know, South, we were known as like the people that brought the South by Southwest event that would have like, you know, we had Flip De Niro, we had Trey and T.I. come out. We had all these people come out. And um, a lot of them ended up being somebody that the year that we brought them out, no one knew about them. But then a year later, it was like there was somebody. So that's kind of where I got my name from is people in the industry actually telling me like, man, you're like a tastemaker. You're like a, you need to come uh, up with a name. You know what I'm saying? You need to do something because every time you bring somebody out, they blow up a year later. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. I got that here. I really, I've, I've known this since I was a kid. I said in a couple of interviews before, like, I knew, I wish I would have typed in this earlier, but I knew it was like, even when I was in, I had that, when I was the, the homie with the, with the first car and I had to get all the homies in the car, if they was having a bad day, bro, I could let, make them listen to something and it may be new to them, but I knew that it would like, they would love it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just always had that kind of talent. I just know, I just know good music. Got you, got you. And you said it was, it was Mixy Shows, right? Yeah, Mixy Shows, yeah. Mixyshows.com, M-I-X-I. It was, uh, we did a couple official South Park shows. We did a couple stuff at the BET Awards, like parties and stuff. So we did some really cool things, man. Yeah, and low key, that's why I actually think I like saw your name for the first time because uh, I do I do South Park, you know, every year, you know, before the pandemic, of course. But um, and you know, you would see flyers out, you would see shows, you know, you would see different posts on social medias, and I think that's why I actually stumbled across your name because you had the long ass dreads, right? Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, that was my that was my calling sign for a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so what happened with Mixie shows? Uh, what did you move on uh, after that? Uh, so now after Mixie, it's more Tastemaker Group. Inco- I actually incorporated my own company, Tastemaker Group. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically it's, it's, a, it's a Mixie 2.0. Gotcha. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, so what I realized as a, a CEO of Mixie is that I had a lot of culture people, but I didn't have operations type people. I didn't have people that, we were all photographers, videographers, audio, all of the stuff. But then when it came to the business, sometimes we were losing a little bit because we didn't have the people that were just doing the nuts and bolts. And so, you know, I had to grow as an entrepreneur and, you know, now we're kind of pivoting into this where I have kind of both sides. I'm able to do a little bit more. And now we specifically manage uh, brands, uh, events and artists. You know, and I have a real, like, you know, dedicated understanding of where we're, we're going to gonna be going with this. Got you. Got you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you said artist management, too, man. Uh, do y'all, uh, how, what, what's your roster like right now uh, as far as who you guys manage? Yeah, so we have a guy in Detroit. Uh, his name is Major D-Star. He actually just got out of an interview with um, DJ Small Eyes. Um, we've got Artist X, who's from Austin, R&B singer. Um, we've got Samson Six. Um, he's like a uh, a Latin singer. 
Uh, but who I'm really, 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 really excited about um, is is Kelly Rose. Uh, she's a she's a pop singer from Portland. Um, she's working with Drake Crocker right now, um, and he's signed to Sony. So we're pitching all the songs to her. You guys would love her. Um, and then Lil Doozy from here, actually in Austin. Uh, Lil Doozy is he only has a couple of songs out, so we're kind of getting his library up. But I promise you, man, um, you're going to, I mean, if you like Bryson Tiller, Tory Lanez, or that new guy Blast, mm -hmm. music like that, like this guy is going to do something, man. Yeah, like a lot of hip hop type shit. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah right. I call it trap soul type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Okay. It's, uh, it's dope, man. He's going to be real good. So those are, those are the, that's the roster right now. We're, we haven't gone super public yet. We haven't put out ads or anything. We're just trying to get our processes right before we uh, go crazy with it. Got you, got you, and, and it's you as well as a team of people, correct? Yeah, yep. Got you, got you. Okay, that's cool, man. That's cool. I, I love to uh, hear anybody that's doing anything on the management side because I actually manage artists here in Austin as well. Nice. Um. So yeah, you know, anytime that you know I, I come across anybody that manages or you know management companies, anything like that, I love to like pick their brains and just kind of you know just pick their brain. You know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I love to do. That's cool. That's cool, man. That's cool. Uh, you definitely got to send us those socials, man, for, for to them artists. Yeah, I definitely want to check them on the out, bro. Oh yeah, man. I got you, man. Like that's that's what I want to end up being, and I think that's kind of where we connected to on that post that I put out. I was like, I, like I think there's a huge need for like a uh, like a buffer between um, the corporate Austin and, and the the hip hop and urban scene. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I would love to be that kind of liaison. Like, if you guys are like, look, send me an artist, but send me somebody who can actually speak, right, on camera and actually do an yeah. interview, someone who actually has content, someone who's actually good at what they're doing, I can make sure and vet that. for. Like, I, I'm so deep into the independent artist that I can, I can tell you off top who can do the right thing. So I hope I can start to be that liaison for everybody as Cam the Tastemaker. Anybody who's looking for urban music, but they want respectable stuff, I, I promise you I can make it happen. That's so, so is, uh, I'm sorry, um, is there anything that you're doing, all that, that you just said, is that sort of like a response to, I know um, there was that article that came out and we were talking about uh, how Austin doesn't have the same backing as Houston or Dallas for the, as far as corporate the labels, et cetera, you know? Is that sort of your response to it, to combat what we're missing out here in Austin? Yeah, correct. Uh, I think it's just that people aren't having the right conversations. I think that our press doesn't look further enough into the scene, but I get it. Like, they don't know who to talk to, but they're trying. And I just want to just, like, be like, look, come talk to me, like, and I can get this stuff right because what's happening is we're putting stuff out there to the world that they're not even sure that they're actually proud of. You know what I'm saying? They're just they're just yeah. hoping and wishing because somebody in their office told them that this was the person. But if you talk to the community, the community says it's different, you know? Yeah. So I think we just need, in order for the community to be happy about what we're putting out there, the press and everybody else needs to validate what's going on. And so we need some kind of like funnel that people can go through and vet. We need to separate the men from the boys, dog. Yeah. That's just what it is. Yeah. yeah. We have to stop being so friendly, I think. So if we start putting real stuff out there and don't care about the clout and care more about the good music, it's gonna shine. You know, it's gonna take, it's gonna take over. So yeah, I love it. I'm I'm glad there's somebody actually pointing out those flaws and letting me know what needs to be done. Because I mean, honestly, yes, Austin has had a scene for the longest, and it's always been a scene here that we can we can honor oh, because we're all here. Yes. but it's never reached that uh, like attention that we would like that would help everybody out, you know? Yeah. And I feel like we're, we're, we're probably pretty a little, a little close. We're away from it, but we're getting a little close, but we could be yeah. so much further. Yes, correct. I just think that we missed, we missed the time of because you're hustle, you'll make it. You know what I'm saying? Labels, yeah. businesses, they just want to pour some money on something that's already happening. They don't want to wait for you to have to build it. And so we're in the push button society where it's not going to work anymore to say we just have the, the Houston guys showed that hustle could overtake. Yeah. But yeah. that was when hustle was OK. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't even go to all these record stores and drop off our shit because COVID. So it's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like there's so many different things that kind of cut off. So, yeah, man, I just think there just needs to be something like 
There's so many people that have come out of Austin outside of our genre that have so much backing from brands, bro. Yeah. It's just that they don't pay attention to what we have going. Now, mm -hmm. on the other side as well, sometimes when we do get the look, we fumble. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? So okay. it's not always their fault. Um, and I think that's where we just need to help each other. To, like, look, man, rehearsals do matter. Rapping yeah. and singing over your lyrics do matter. Like, let's let's start doing things the real way instead of complaining about it and trying to take shortcuts and then maybe people will give us the right stuff. So it's it's a it's a double edged sword. Why why do you, why do you think that why do you think that is not to cut you off, Mario? My bad. But why do you think that is? Uh, that they don't give like Austin hip hop a chance, right? Like they would give, you know, the other uh, names outside of the hip hop genre, even though we proved to, you know, pack out, you know, places, you know, the turnouts, you know. Uh, why do you think that is, bro? Uh, honestly, it's, there's no, I've talked to, I'm not gonna drop the name. I've talked to the highest people in organizations that work with the state, the city and all that around here who work with Live Nation C3. Let's just put it that way. The company that everybody knows that made it out, Yep. Right, they still get segmented, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. There's just something that they just don't want that to be. They don't, I don't think when you when you watch TV commercials on on uh, and you see that they're showing Austin, they always use country as the background music. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they want the the theme of Austin to change. When you look at Atlanta TV shows, they use hip hop music in the background. Yeah, yeah. It don't matter yeah. what it is. You feel me? I think because they're showing the culture that they feel is there. I don't think they want it to change to say, well, let's put Kid Jones on every commercial that Austin has. I don't think they want to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, we have the stigma that it's like, yes, it's the live music capital of the world, but we're not, what they make people think is that it's you know, we show up and it's only rock bands or country bands or any of that you know but disregard hip-hop r&b anything from our scene like because apparently it doesn't exist to them you know so apparently it's not there it's weird yeah. um but you know uh, we just gotta start kicking in doors man and then i think we just gotta start doing stuff like this start having the conversation more in places where people other people can hear it and that's what i was saying on facebook like man the facebook conversations don't do nothing for our culture no. this is where it helps it yeah. circulates within our own groups <coughs> yeah, as, as much as it does, you know. So this is why we need to do stuff like this. Have people like yourself out here that we can promote and show that why we do what we do, why we need to move a different way, why we need to re regroup, back up, regroup. If it doesn't work out, cool, let's try something else, you know. 100%, man. It'd be huge, man. I, I want to see a lot more... I just want to see a lot more community, um, you know? I just want to see a lot more, more, more of us working together and less about who's coming out first and who's coming out last. And it's like, if the door is open for Austin, y'all will see everybody's walking through it. Everybody will yeah. walk through it, bro. No one cared what DJ Screw's crew, no one cared. I don't even know. Tell me who out of DJ Screw's crew came out first. Was it Flip? Was it Camille? Was it Paul? I don't even know who it was. I don't like the yeah. It's, it's a lot. In the, yeah. Go back. I would have to go back and, and think yeah, about like, who that. cares, right? Like all you yeah. know is that they're all lit and they all came from Houston. So that's what we should take the same ideas. Like as long as somebody gets out, we all gonna be. We all get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so to, to, to keep it in Austin hip hop, you know, besides the artists that you like manage, right? I don't know if you're at liberty to say, but do you have favorites around Austin? Um, but, uh, you know, you know, some of those more common, frequently heard names, you know, amongst the crowds and amongst social medias. Do you have anybody? You that you, yeah. You, who, who are you? You listening to from the city specifically? <laughs> Legit, bro. I listen to Lil Doozy. I listen to uh, Johnny Jukebox. You ever heard Johnny Jukebox? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny, he's, he's supposed to come on here with us, so. Yeah. Johnny's fire, bro. Uh, yeah. Jocks is fire. Okay. Uh, Foolish tie, fire. Uh, Jason, bro, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I do that playlist and I told my friends the other day, like, yo, we could legit have an Austin radio station that played nothing but our music and it would jam. I know it would, yep. I promise you it would. Yep. Um, I like Jocks, I like a Meryl Soul, of course, right? Yes. Um, 
There's this girl named Chloe that does like this, like real soulful pop, weird, like, yo, it's crazy. Um, let's see, bro. I can go down the lip, bro. Uh, if you if you think about like a spitter, like a rap, like rap, rap, like your rap, like your rappers mm -hmm. would would be a fan of this rapper. Uh, Snotty Nose Bastard. If you ever oh. heard bro. Look, man, that's so, so crazy thing is, is like I said, I hate to keep referencing another podcast, but my other podcast, <laughs> one of his tracks is often, uh, often that episode too. Bro got it, man. He, he bro. has it. That bro. PP, the PPG dudes, bro. And PPG dudes can go. Naughty has it, bro. He, he has it, fam. That, <laughs> so that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I could go for it, bro. I could go. There's, I've had that playlist for about six months. I have, not, bro, not one bad song has, and there's been like 300, 400 songs in there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, we have the talent here. Uh, who else, man? Uh, that's just hip hop. Like, yeah, there's just so many people, bro. But yeah, like, that's that's who's on my, that's who's on my stuff right now. And, and, and that's the uh, the taste playlist, right? That you do, yeah, the, the, the taste of ATX. Yeah. yeah, that was my answer to the pandemic of people be, you know talking about like you know we don't have this it's like man let's support our artists right here if we go down here and we spit and we keep spinning their music they're gonna get paid yeah yeah uh everything's handpicked by you on the list or is it is you working yeah. with others as well well just me and my team we just basically listen to the submissions or we go out and look for stuff you know and of course i follow everybody that i like on spotify so i get it on the release radar i can see their tracks as soon as it comes up Got you. Oh, okay. Got you. Okay. Okay. I remember you used to uh uh you used to do tastemaker radio, right? Yeah, man. Do you still My do God. tastemaker radio? No, so uh that's actually a great question. I thank you about that. Um tastemaker radio was a project I was doing with an app that I was working with that allowed uh and it, man, it's crazy that it didn't catch because this thing is probably the most innovative thing I've seen still to this day. Okay. And people still haven't caught on to it. But it was an app that was a radio app that would multiply your view, but your, your streams by the amount of people that were listening at that moment, right? So if I had a hundred people listening to your song while I played it, you get a hundred streams in that first play. Damn. Damn. That's what I'm saying. So I was trying to get artists. I was like, look, bro, if we just get on this every Tuesday and just get yeah. often on it. Every time the song plays, you might get a thousand plays if we can get a thousand people listening. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We see it all come yeah. together, but that's the thing is that it was my, I, look, I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. I'm gonna start being real on all these interviews. I feel like because it was Tastemaker Radio, mm -hmm. there were some things about it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh -huh. I feel like if I was to remove myself and I would allow like somebody else to do it or something that people would, would get onto it. Cause I don't know if people like the ownership part that, that, you know, people try to have something and they feel like they're giving me something, but I'm like, I'm giving you something that you could have never had, which is multiple plays off of one stream. Yeah. So this yeah. isn't about me. This is about me helping you. That's what I do. I'm the tastemaker. So if our goals are aligned where I want to help you get somewhere, you want to get somewhere, what does all the in-between matter? Exactly. You know, matter, yeah. right? We got the same goal. So, but anyway. Austin shit, man. It's that, it's that <laughs> crap in a barrel shit, but mm -hmm. you know, uh, but anyway, I, the app's still there. I can still turn it turn it back on. It just there's a lot of things that I start and I do for this for the community that I don't feel like if it doesn't get enough traction, I'm putting a lot of effort and time into something I'm not getting paid for, and it's helping everybody else do. And so you know, it just I have to prioritize myself sometimes. Yeah, it's also like the struggles of a, a creative, right? Like when you plan stuff, put stuff in motion, you want it to go a certain way, you have this idea that it'll go a certain way. I think uh I'll do it all. You know, me and Mario, we go through that all the time, you know, just just on the podcast side of things, you know, as far as just retaining listeners or just, you know, retaining support, man. Like it's it's harder than it looks. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely harder than it looks. Man. I mean I'm sure just like I do with my shows, you guys probably get people up here that won't even promote that they're on your stuff. You know, yeah, it's happened. It's that's happened. Crazy to me. Like, how was how does that help and, anybody, bro? I have artists be like, How how many listeners is it? I'm like, what? There's more, it's different listeners than you ever talked to before. If it's different people, you should be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and and it's crazy you say that because uh um 
I, I, I don't know if I was talking to Nick about it a while back or some, I was talking to somebody, but it's like whenever we post the the promotion for it, the, the, the drop for the audio, the drop for the video, it always like shows their work ethic and how much they're trying to promote themselves by the way that their artists go. Like they go on their own to promote the episode that we have. Yeah, we'll do everything on our end to promote the show, but it's a kind of a two way street, you know. Like if you pop, we pop, we pop, you pop. You know, it's a win win situation. There's no I don't understand. People got to understand that, man. If artists are listening to this, like that's the part that we have to understand as a group is that I need you guys and y'all need me the same. Y'all need people, somebody to interview. I need somebody to interview me. Right. If y'all blow up, I can say I was on your show. If I blow up, y'all can say I was on your show. Exactly. Like, I, like there's a logic. Like, how does it not make sense? To I don't like, get it. Promote that shit. You know, if you're proud to about the shit that you're talking about, about your music, about whatever, you know, promote that shit. If I can push that shit heavy as, as much as we do, you know, so you can only push somebody so much, so much, you know. As you guys see, man, that's why I sent my PR girl to you because I was like, I want to, this needs to be long term. You know, all this like hit it and quit it shit that we be doing. That's why we don't, that's why we never get married. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Straight up. Don't speak too soon, man. Hey, <laughs> not gonna lie, man. I, I popped a question to my long time girlfriend. Yes, yes. Uh, so, you know, you, your boy is engaged. Uh, hey, congrats, you know, bro. Hey, appreciate you, man. It's appreciate you. You, know, you know, I'm out of the game, man. You know, put hey, me in the man. rafters. Find me. You got to grab her, bro. I got to hang my jersey up, man. You got to, hey, but, but, but no, I mean, but in all serious, though, man, like, but, but what keeps you going, though, man? Like, you said you've started, you know, different things. Um, you know, you haven't had, Sometimes you haven't had the support that you would like. Um, of course, it's for the love of it, right? Like you love what what you're doing. Uh, well, just what? Just give some tips to like just how to keep going, man. Yeah, no, honestly, bro. Um, it is 100 percent like block scheduling and getting yourself like, like in a point where it's not burnout, right? Um, now, for me, it literally is the fact that like I truly, truly, truly feel that this is my like this is what I was called to do. Um, and I've been blessed enough since I stopped working at Apple three, four years ago to be able to still make enough money to, to do from this kind of thing. And All so right. my motivation is literally just like, I don't have no other option unless yeah. I try to go back to work. Um, but also that I see, I see the results, bro. Like it's something different whenever like I'm working with an artist and they can pay their bills now off of music or they can't. You know what I'm saying? Like their the child support is paid and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for real. Stuff like that. It's real stuff that motivates it motivates me to keep going because it's real. And we don't have to be Drake to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's that. But like I said, it's, it's the burnout. And then, you know, I think it's just who I am, man. I don't know. Like, I love entertaining. I love, like, we just threw a house party. Like, I just love, I love doing it. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to get back to a point where I'm not loving what I do. Every yeah. day I wake up and, you know, I don't need any alarm. I'm up at six, seven o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to get to it, you know? Um, and I think that's just a blessing that I've been able to have and I just try to be grateful for it. Um, but then those days that maybe like it's hard for me, um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, bro, I'll get on YouTube and find inspirational videos and stuff, like try to just get myself going every morning. Like I literally have a block on my schedule every morning too. It's just learning, it's self-development. And so I try to find things that will inspire me or try to get me up and, you know, going. So stuff like that. That's dope, though. That's dope, man. Has the, uh, has the pandemic, you know, other than not being able to put on, like, live shows, um, just talk about how you've been able to maneuver, just kind of keeping yourself afloat through the pandemic. And, and you know. Man, that's, that's great. Uh, honestly, it's been it's, – I, I think it's all because I got more self-aware. Um, you know, during the pandemic, I've literally read – way more books than I've ever read in my life, okay. um, you know, and I've learned a lot of different things. I've learned how to move with the universe. There's just a lot of, a lot of different things that when the world stopped, I kind of needed it because I was just going crazy with all the stuff I was doing and not really thinking about myself, my health, anything like that. And so uh, I think what that did was put me on a, like a, a better position for me which then gave me a better possibilities. And so, you know, um, I was able to pivot to rentarecordlabel.com where I basically have my artists, they pay us up front rather than us taking a percentage of their career. 
and then they they get to keep all of the hundred percent of their career. So right. a smaller amount of money actually comes out of their paycheck because I'm not taking twenty percent like a manager of everything that they ever do, right? Um, and so that's kind of how I pivoted was, hey, look, like in order for me to be okay, just like pay me up front and then I'll be able to pay my bills, but I'll also be able to use that money to help you with your career. And then you keep 100% of your career so everything you make is profit. And so their margins got a little bit higher as well. So it helps both ways. And that's, that's kind of what we did was we broke the system. Like a lot of artists, you know, five years ago, two, even two years ago, they would look at me like, what, pay you up front? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, right now, it's more like everybody's looking at Drake, looking at Russ, looking at all these people that are like, man, I'm about to go independent. Fuck all this. Um, and so they, they're starting to understand like, oh, shit, if I just pay you a little bit right now, we can do a lot of other stuff. And it's like, yeah, let's do it. So that's kind of how it goes. I think that's one of the biggest, like, um, you know, just on, on the management side for me, uh, finances is always the one of the biggest hurdles, right? Like, you know, money for 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 videos, money for promotion, uh, just money in general, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That, that that's always like one of the biggest like walls. How how do you get your your artists to like buy in? Oh, that's a great question, man. So honestly, it, it's it's the process. I sell an infinite game. So instead of telling them, like I'm gonna get you to a hundred thousand listeners on Spotify, it's like I don't I don't guarantee anything except for that I will be your guide from from for the process of moving you from where you are to where you want to go gotcha. right so I, I I manage that process wherever you are and help you through all of that and it's the infinite game it's the are you trying to do this for life are you doing this for clout if you're doing this for clout and you're trying to just get to a certain amount of Instagram followers there's other people you can use for that yeah. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm not the guy for that. I'm the guy that's like, if you're in 10 years, want to continue to still write music and still be able to, you know, be in a studio every day because you're a, a career musician, I can help you get there. And then if you become Drake after that, like, that's great. But I, I don't want to promise you anything. <laughs> I can't. It's the music industry. Like, you know? That's the thing, you know, and there's so many grimy people in the music industry, you know, uh, they probably see, you know, people like us, you know, management trying, that's like some like slithery snake just trying to like, you know, suck the life out of them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that that whole like aspect to just get somebody to trust you and a buy in, it's big. And hell, you got a full roster, man. So shit, they obviously see that you're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to manage right now. I'm glad I have a team where I'm trying to get through all of that. Like, like I said, I try to be real, real, real with everybody. Like it's hard for me to start delegating stuff to everybody because I've always been the one that's doing it all. But in order for me to be able to scale and be able to hit as many artists as I know I can, you know, I got to get my team up and running. So that's what I'm working on right now is just making sure that I'm following up with all the stuff that I am promising. Got you. Got you, man. Um, talk, just talk about some, some, some of the tips of uh, how, how important it is for like just artists to network, bro. Like you seem like the ultimate networking guy. Like, Yes. Connected here, you're connected there. Just talk about the importance of that for me, man. Oh, bro, I cannot even tell you how important, like, relationships. And people get networking misconstrued. Like, they, I don't think they totally understand, right? Like, um, in order for a network to work, uh, the, it wouldn't be a network unless it went both ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, it's just like a, it's a line. It's a lane for something else. It's just a connection point. And so when you come to somebody and try to network and then you're just asking for what they can do for you, that's not a networking <laughs> opportunity. That's you asking for a favor. Exactly. And so I think that's where most people have to start understanding is their approach of what can you do for that person to make their job easier to do it for you. And so a lot of people, I'm just going to put it out there. This is just a gem, right? Um, if you... Uh, for example, I got I got to write up on the source, mm -hmm. and so I used that and brought it to the Awesome Chronicle, and the Awesome Chronicle then wrote about me. I had to go to the source to get that done. Right yeah. now, that was me using my network to then say, "Hey, I've got something valuable here. You're a writer at the Awesome Chronicle. Here's your write up for this week," and it was done because I made his job easy. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. And so. You have to kind of do that. You have to make sure, like, what does that person need from you in order to say, oh, that's something I need to do. 
for that, you know? So it's, it's those kind of things. When you're going into, um, you know, uh, like a networking actual opportunity, like a, like, a, like a gathering or a party or something, you know? Um, ensuring that like you ask about what they are have going on and what they have, what, what they can do will then give you insight on what things you could help with. And you can be creative. You know, I tell artists all the time, like, why are you waiting to hit up this venue when they have a show that you need? Why aren't you hitting them? You know, they're going to have shows for the next three years that you're going to want to get on. Yeah. So play the infinite game and get in and network with them and do weird shit like people ain't never done before. Bro, Ben Buck. Y'all know Ben Buck? Yeah. yeah. He was on our show. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He's the beatboxer as well, right? <clears throat> yeah. That man's the smartest, one of the smartest rappers out here because what he did with Empire is he said, I'm going to be on y'all street team. He went and promoted everybody else's shows. You know what I'm saying? And showed that he could sell tickets. And then what they do? They put him on all the shows after that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because he's unselfish. Yeah. He's saying, yo, look, I can bring people. When I'm not even on the show, I can help you bring people. Who would not want to help that person out? Exactly. And that's what people don't understand. Like, you got to go on. Instead of asking for that favor, show them what you can do for them. That way, it's like, if they were to do that to you, then, yeah, of course, you're going to want to work with them. Of course. And, you know? Of course. Again, logic. He sell 20 tickets to a show he ain't on? Well, shit, he could probably sell 50 tickets, you know? But at the yeah. same time, imagine his fan base knows him for the guy that has the tickets. Yeah. That's true. There's That's all true. different ways that he can freak that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, but then also, you know, networking as far as, like, from from why I say infinite game is because nowadays the reason why venues and why artists and everybody calls me to get help them with after parties or whatever is because I can text or call somebody right now and get an answer from an artist or a manager that it would take you five, 10 years to find out that con that contact, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's also something that I had to realize myself is that when people ask me for stuff, even though I can get it done in five seconds, you should be paying for the five years it took me to get that relationship. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But that's kind of what it is, right? It's like, you can get yourself in a position where you know somebody like you guys. Like I said, the more we connect, if you guys blow up, now I have your connect. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's the networking part. And I just, I think people don't see in the long run how they could use other people later on. And I think that's what they have to look at is quit looking at it as a short game right now. Like it's that's right now is just a kick off of whatever we're gonna be doing in a year or two. For sure. Build the relationship. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of a lot of people around Austin, man, they burn bridges, man, and then try mm -hmm. to double back to you, you know, once they need you. So it's, you know, it's always a little weird, you know. It you know, is, bro. We gotta talk about it, man. That's the type of stuff that I think we need to start saying on these you know, on these podcasts, on these press and stuff. That's why I said, man, put me on your stuff. Cause I know there's people out there that got something to say with me, but they won't put me on their, on their, on their platform and talk about it. Cause you know, I'll air it out. And it's yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not scared to, to say whatever it is. And I think that's what we need just because we need to be a production city, not a consumption city right now. We consume everybody else's bullshit. I want to make our own stuff and make New York hear what we're talking about, make LA hear what we're talking about. But if we're talking about it on Facebook and not in a platform where it makes people mon or allows us to monetize it, it don't help nothing. Yeah. And it doesn't allow anybody else to join the conversation. Now, whoever hears this can can have their point on it, and they might talk about it later on in y'all's and y'all uh, podcast later on. So, yeah, I, just, I don't know, man. I yeah, hope man. we move more like New York and LA do. Yeah, man, you, you you see it a lot on social media. Like, I know you say you see it on Facebook. I see it on Twitter all the time, man. It's just like, you know, frustrated, like disgruntled <laughs> artists here, man. They'll be yeah. just like, oh, why is it only, you know, the, your friends for you? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Like, and it's literally, you, you can count three to four different artists like damn near a day that do it. You know what I mean? Talented artists at that. Alex. It's, like, it's like focus on y'all focusing on the wrong fucking thing to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, man, it's 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 a little disheartening, man. But I I, I definitely think we got it. You know, this the city has it. Oh, we, we have it, bro. On all ends of the spectrum, whether it's hip hop, whether it's R and B and soul, you know, rock right now, uh Sandy yeah. kills it. You feel me? Like it's a it's a lot of people that are doing it on like different ends of the spectrum. And man, it's just like 
come on, man. The city, just get behind us. Just, just That's everybody, it. just get behind each other, man, and let's do it, bro. That's it. It's always the same arguments. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Like you, like I was going to say, just bet it out because, just like you were saying, it's always the same arguments. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, you need to give like master classes, bro. You ever thought about that? <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, so that's one of the options that we have with Rental Rec Label is our master classes. Um, and yeah, I mean, I even did it with Austin Music Foundation. I, I do their consultations for, for, you know, urban or, you know, hip hop artists, all that kind of stuff. So, but I want to get into more of it. But that's the thing, man. Like the programs that do this already for other genres, like, they don't answer the emails. Like, it's just kind of, it's just one of those things. It seems like, it just seems like they want to talk about, hey, we have this, but they don't want to actually step up and do it. So I think we just got to do it ourselves. Um, and, you know, I, I would love to, man. Even if y'all want to help me out, do something like that. I would, I would love to do something like that. We can talk about it for sure after the show. And brainstorm, you know, it's a, we're all here for it. Come together and make a change, I'm with it. I'm just trying to, I think we need it, man. Fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, shit. Uh, uh, is there is there anything that you're promoting right now? Is there anything that you um, uh, just kind of want the people to, to, you know, be hip on or turn their heads to? Yeah, definitely. Um, if any artists are, hit, are listening right now, definitely artist brands or events, definitely hit me up. Contact me, please. Um, we're working on this new technology called Crowd Stereo, which is a MailChimp competitor. And it's really, really cool because it's built specifically for artists, manage, or artists, brands, and events where we can geolocate the people that are on your email list and then soon we'll have text messaging marketing as well. And the reason why I say all this is because data is king like we know. And so uh, I would love for you guys to just check out Crowd Stereo because what this will allow you to do is know where your fan base is at, who they are, where they're going, all that kind of stuff, and then be able to upsell them and actually create your business uh, through an email and text message list. Um, so I would really encourage everybody to just definitely check that out um, and let me know if you have any questions. Gotcha, gotcha. Mario, you got, it, you, you got anything, man? Yes, I do. First of all, thank you, Cam, for coming on and kicking it with us. It's, it's, I've been looking forward to this. And as always, I'm glad that you came and spoke your truth, you know, told you to drop these jams. Um, aside from that, um, I'm just going to be my own shameless plug. Uh, as you all know, we have the IDK Network, and we just uh, – we had the first two-hour lunch break episode underneath us, and that was awesome, as it usually always has gone. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. We will have the video coming soon. And then we have the over 500 sports podcast. And I'm a little salty because Mark gets his own show and he already has a sponsorship by a bar, bro. Like, hey, hey, yeah. hey, my bar sponsorship, bro. Yeah. Damn, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So it's, it's more more info on that coming soon and a lot of other shit that we have in store. Uh, same way as the uh, camps is like, we just got to find a way to attack it. We, if we can't, if I can't do it one podcast, I'm fucking just do fucking 10 podcast episodes, 10 events, and just, you know, one way or another, we're going to we're gonna uh, change that mentality that we're here in the, having the city and stop dividing, start a uh, fucking addition, bro, like coming together and, you know, that's... Yeah, for yeah, real. Right. You just come together, man. And we'll, we'll, we'll shit, Cam, go ahead and plug yourself, man. Give them all your socials, websites, the whole nine, bro. Yes, sir, definitely. Y'all can check me out on all socials at Cam the Tastemaker. Uh, Tastemaker is not spelled out. It's T-S-T-M-K-R on all socials. Uh, CanadaTastemaker.com and then RentsRecordLabel.com. Y'all definitely hit me up, man. Um, you know, like I said, artists, brands, and events. I'm here to help. For sure, man. For sure. Well, I'm going to definitely give you that follow. Like I said, I've been I've been seeing your name forever, bro. Like, and, you know, you. I think with Austin, you know, not to, like, fucking go back, but, it's like, you never know how to, like, gauge a person that you've never met, right? Like, you don't know if he's going to be a dick, an asshole. Uh, you know, people are, are scared to ask for help or for knowledge. You know what I mean? So uh, mm -hmm. for you to just come and like shed light, uh, drop gems, let people know a little bit more about yourself is is is, 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 is greatly appreciated, bro. Like, yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I'm not. I'm never gonna cool guy anybody from Austin. Like I like we talked about before. Like I think that stuff like this is what's gonna help push ourselves forward. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I'm always here. You guys, please always call on me whenever you need me. I'll, I'll shut the fuck up. 
If you hear about any of the artists that are popping and need connection to them, anything like that, man, I'm here. I want to be that connection for y'all. So use me if you need me. And I appreciate it. Most definitely. Well, shit, this has been another episode of the IDK podcast, man, with the homie Cam, the tastemaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's your boy, Neighborhood Nick, man. This is Mark from the South Side. All right, man, and we're out. Peace. Later.